Hello, in this section, we're going to start talking about section 7.2, confidence intervals for means. Please make sure you have your guided notes to follow along. We're specifically going to talk about how to find a confidence interval for a mean when sigma is known in this video. There are three main concepts included in this section. We're going to talk about a point estimate for a mean. The sample mean is the best point estimate for a population mean. We're going to talk about confidence intervals, using sample data to construct and interpret a confidence interval estimate of a true value of the population mean mu. Once again, in this video, we're going to talk about when sigma is known and how to construct confidence intervals when sigma is known. We're also going to do problems where we find the sample size, the sample size necessary to estimate a population mean. Let's talk about the requirements for finding a confidence interval for mu when sigma is known. Remember, mu is our population mean, while sigma is the population standard deviation. So in this video, we're doing problems where the population standard deviation is known. Our requirements, let x be a random variable appropriate to your application. Obtain a simple random sample of size n of x values from which you compute the sample mean x bar. The value of sigma is already known, perhaps from a previous study. If you can assume that x has a normal distribution, then any sample size will work. If you cannot assume that you have a normal distribution, then you have to have a sample size of greater than or equal to 30. And remember, we learned about that when we were talking about sampling distributions for a mean, and then we talked about the central limit theorem, and this is all related, connecting, and building. So our confidence interval for a mean when sigma is known, to find that, we're going to take our point estimate of the mean, which is our sample mean, and subtract our error, and we'll take our sample mean, and we'll add our error. And I'll write that so it's a little bit bigger. So mu is going to be between x bar minus your error and x bar plus your error. And here we have a formula for finding that error. Now you're going to see in the formula written on your paper that it says z sub c, so z critical. That's your critical value. And we've also learned that to be stated as z sub alpha over 2. Those are the same thing and we call them the critical value. So we have a formula for our error, and in that formula we take our critical value and we're going to multiply it by the stand population standard deviation over the square root of n. And you can see here below that it says the probability is C that X bar is within this range of error of the true population mean mu. So that's just a graphic representation of what our confidence interval of the mean is telling us. Just like in previous sections, I am going to show you how to use your calculator to do this, and I'm going to emphasize the use of the calculator. Though for confidence intervals, I will show you how to do problems with the calculator and without the calculator. So this is directly from your calculator packet from the beginning of the semester, finding an interval estimate of a mean when sigma is known. Just like we did for an interval estimates for a proportion, we go stat test, but this time we're going to click on Z interval and follow the prompts. We're going to choose data if we entered a list, and otherwise we'll choose stats. We're going to do examples that will help us understand those directions. First example we'll do by hand, and then we'll go back and we'll use our calculator functions um, to find the answer. So our example says, Julia has been jogging for a number of years, during which time her physical condition has remained constantly good. Usually she jogs two miles per day. The standard deviation of her time is 1.8 minutes. During the past year, Julia recorded her times to run two miles. She has a random sample of 90 of these times. She has a mean of 15.6 minutes, that's her X bar, to run the two miles. Let mu represent the mean jogging time for the entire distribution. We want to find a 95% confidence um, interval for mu. 
So our confidence level is 95%. So to find this by hand, the first thing we need to do is calculate the error. You can see that I have written in um, the information we know, sigma, n, x bar, I've written our error formula. We have a 95% confidence interval. And if you look at your table from the 7.1 notes, we know that the critical value of z associated with that is going to be 1.96. So now I can just fill in the formula. We'll have 1.96 times 1.8 over the square root of 90. And when we put that in our calculator, we'll get E equals 0.372, or 0 0.372. Next, we'll put together our confidence interval. We'll do x bar minus E to x bar plus E. So mu is between those two values. We just need to find out what those values are. So our x bar, our mean, is 15.6. So I'll have 15.6 minus 0.372. So x is between that, or sorry, mu is between that, and it's between 15.6 plus 0.372. So when we calculate those values, we'll get 15.23 to 15.972. So mu goes from 15.23 minutes to 15.972 minutes. And that's our 95% confidence interval for her mean running time. Now we're going to go through and we're going to use our graphing calculators or technology in order to find the same thing. So we have our important information listed over here and we're going to use that and follow the prompts on our calculator. Remember before we do it, we're going to be going stat, tests, over to tests, and then we're going to select the Z interval and follow the prompts. So in my calculator, I press stat, I press over, over until I get to test, and I'm going to scroll down until I get to Z interval, which is number seven. So you can just select number seven if you want. And we have an option for data or stats. We didn't put any data into our list, so we're going to select stats. Our sigma in this problem is 1.8 x bar was 15.6 and n was 90. That's our sample size. Our confidence level is 95%, so we'll write 0.95 and then we'll go ahead and we'll calculate. And you'll see that we should come up with the same answer that we got previously. You'll see here that we got pretty much the same answer. We have 15.228 as opposed to 15.23, but if you rounded those both to the nearest hundredth, they'd be the same. We had to do some rounding in the middle of our problem when we did it by hand, and that's why we're off slightly, so that's due to human error. Now, one thing that you might encounter when you're using your calculator is that you'll have problems on my lab that will ask you to find the error first, and then they'll ask you to find the confidence interval. Well, when we used our calculator, it didn't tell us the error. So what you can do in those problems is find the confidence interval first, like we just did, and then go ahead and find E after. And we learned how to do that, taking our upper limit minus our lower limit and dividing by two when we were doing confidence intervals for proportions. It's the same for means. So we'll take 15.972 minus 15.228 and divide that by two. And we'll get the error in this problem is 0.372. Here's a summary of how to find a point estimate of and an error from a given confidence interval. We just practiced with error, but let's go ahead and do our example. We have given the confidence interval of mu is between 14.7 and 21.5. We want to find the point estimate of mu and the point estimate of e. So to find the point estimate of mu, we're going to add the limits of our confidence interval. So we'll say 14.7 plus 21.5, and then divide by two. And that's gonna give us 18.1. To find the point estimate of e, we're going to subtract those limits and then divide by two. So we'll have 21.5, minus 14.7 
divided by 2, and we'll get, in this case, 3.4. You'll see it's the same process that we used when we were um, finding the point estimates for um, confidence intervals of proportions. Another skill we want to be able to do is to find the sample size n for estimating mu when sigma is known. And in this case, we're going to take our critical value, multiply it by sigma, and divide by error, and then square the whole thing. And like before, we're always going to round up, even if that decimal place part is less than 0.5 you always round up. Let's look at an example for finding sample size. A wildlife study is designed to find the mean weight of salmon caught by an Alaskan fishing company. The preliminary study of salmon shows that um, sigma is 2.15 pounds. How large a sample should be taken to be 95, I'm sorry, 99% confident that the sample mean X bar is within 0.2 pounds of the mean weight mu. So I wrote down the important information we got from the problem. And it looks like in our formula for n that I've written down, we know all the information except for our critical value. Now in your 7.1 notes, I believe on page three, you have a table of commonly used critical values. And there we can ha we have the critical value associated with a 99% confidence level. This is also something that we can calculate on our own. And if you look at the notes, the completed notes I posted, um, there is an explanation on this page for how to calculate this value. But the critical value we can just take from the table is 2.575. So let's fill in our formula and calculate our value of n. So when we plug that into our calculator, we'll get n equals 766.25. Now, even though this is less than 0.5 on our decimal part, we're always going to round up because if we just used a sample size of 766, it wouldn't be enough. You need that 0.25 at least more. So we're going to say n is 767. For any students wondering how that critical value for the 99% confidence level was calculated, first you can draw a diagram. As you see here, I have the 99% um, part shaded, and then I have 0 0.005 on either side. So then what I can do is I'm finding the critical value that has an area of 0.99 plus 0 0.005 or 0 0.995 to the right. So I can do inverse norm of 0 0.995 comma 0 comma 1 and that'll give me 2.575 or alternately you can just say well this is a symmetrical distribution so negative of the critical value would be having an area of 0 0.005 to the left. So I can say negative the inverse norm of 0 0.00501, and that gives me negative um, of negative 2.575, giving me that same answer in the end.